It is the most fish species ecosystem in all of British Columbia. There's no other freshwater aquatic ecosystem that has more species. We've got things like uh, red side shiners, prickly sculpins, northern pike minnows, which uh, anglers either don't know about or they probably wish they weren't there. But um, the reality is, is that uh, it's, an, it's a phenomenal salmon producing uh, habitat. Chinook salmon uh, rear along the bars and the um, edges of these habitats. Uh, through 12 months of the year, you can go out there right now and, and find uh, Chinook salmon rearing in the main stem Fraser River. White sturgeon, of course, it's uh, the most important or the, uh, the center of the lower Fraser white sturgeon population from Mission to Hope. And uh, that is, I might add, uh, listed as uh, an endangered species under the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada. Um, but uh, more than that, there's some really phenomenal aspects of the Fraser River and the gravel reach. The number of salmon, adult salmon, actually utilizing this river or this part of the river is staggering. And pink salmon, which we don't uh, think about an awful lot sometimes, uh, sockeye are the uh, sort of the poster child uh, for salmon in the, in the Fraser watershed. But pink salmon can exceed 10 million fish on some really, really peak years. This is a biologist from the Ministry of Environment, and this is what he said in his email to uh, Water Stewardship Division, who is the authorizing body under uh, the Water Act. Very little information exists regarding fisheries values at Harrison Bar. The application and associated reports do not significantly add to existing fisheries knowledge at this site. The consultant does not provide an assessment of fish populations of fish habitat use at Harrison Bar. Fish were not sampled as part of an assessment of fish use at Harrison Bar. Further, the report does not state where fish were captured other than at Harrison Bar and three other reference sites. That said, the results, because they did catch fish, the results support the contention that Pilot Channel, which is the channel that they just built, uh, is valuable salmonid habitat, and salmonids include salmon and trout. And there has been no compensation or any sort of reasonable mitigation, in my view, for all of the gravel removal sites that have occurred since uh, the letter of agreement was signed. So how did individual projects fare? Well, I think uh, you know some of the uh, issues already. Here was our uh, 2006 big bar issue. Uh, we had several million uh, pink salmon elvins and a few chum salmon elvins uh, that were killed as a function of dewatering. A big causeway went across the channel uh, out at Rosedale. You can see about 80% of the channel was dewatered and uh, some fairly significant mortalities. Uh, Popkin Bar. Uh, this was a side channel way off in the boonies, uh, nowhere near the main channel, the main flows. Essentially, uh, I'd call it a frog pond because uh, basically what it was turned into, it was a properly functioning high water channel that was very, very rich in fish, at least the last time that I sampled it, which was prior to the gravel removal, and it was turned into a great big hole in the river. Um, so from a fisheries perspective, I didn't like it, but um, I guess from a hydraulic perspective, it's even, is perhaps even more important. And what the, uh, again, the hydraulic engineers are saying is if excavations on inactive and tortuous side channels, which is what uh, Popcom Channel was, and Popcom Channel sort of meanders through the back, uh, backwoods here, um, appear to have little or no immediate effect on reducing flood profiles, enlarged and deepened Active side channels continue to have relatively small conveyance. In other words, the ability to push flood waters uh, if they're not in the flood conveyance path. The ministry's uh, own consultants, so these were the private folks, uh, basically said this is probably a sturgeon spawning site. And they've got a nice pretty picture here. Um, they figure that this side channel is sturgeon spawning site. The eggs uh, and larvae would end up down here. This has now been removed and so the uh, consultant was very clear in regards to uh, their opinion. This is a pretty strong statement. Uh, the interpretation is that DFO and uh, Ministry of Environment basically destroyed a sturgeon spawning site. Well, uh, if you add it all up, do just a rough uh, nominal uh, calculation. There's about 300 acres of prime fish habitat that was destroyed as a function of this um, initiative. Uh, no compensation at all. Uh, you know all about the 2006 big bar gravel removal where we had at least a couple million elvins and maybe more destroyed. Uh, sturgeon seem to have collapsed. Um, within the time frame from about 1995 when the big foster bar extraction started to occur 
uh, and then onward, and this is a sort of a really complicated graph, but what it basically shows, uh, and this is from the Fraser River Sturgeon Conservation Society, uh, numbers of sturgeon uh, in different age classes and, or size classes, 40 to 59, 60 to 79 centimeters, and 80 to 99 centimeters, so the little guys, the guys that are uh, the babies that are going to be recruiting into the adult population in, in subsequent years. Um, these graphs uh, re represent 2004, the number of fish in 2005, 2006, and 2007, and they all are in a real strong downward trend. The uh, Fraser River S Stewardship Group Gravel uh, Committee is not opposed to gravel removal per se. We just want it to be done responsibly, and we don't think that it is being done responsibly.